And as the president travels to Asia in Washington, some House Republicans are now working on legislation that would defund the World Health Organization. One of the co-signers of that bill is with us now, Alabama representative and Senate candidate, as he turns around, Congressman Mo Brooks. Congressman, thanks for coming on today. Let's start with, of course, this plan uh, of yours and some of your colleagues to defund the WHO. Tell me more about this bill. Well, a lot of this has to do with Communist China exerting such control over the World Health Organization, as we saw when COVID first brought out or was, I say brought out, when it first came to light, when it first started spreading around the globe. And the World Health Organization was basically parroting whatever the Communist Chinese Party's line. That did not serve us well over the ensuing two years. So this legislation would minimize the WHO's support from the United States of America. We taxpayers have not been properly served by the WHO. Uh, they need to either correct their ways or we as Americans need to quit funding them. Tell me about the president's trip overseas. We are seeing him travel to Asia during a time where there are many challenges he is facing and his administration are domestically. The fact that Taiwan is not on his itinerary, what does that tell you? Well, it's troubling. Uh, Taiwan is under threat from Communist China. Of course, Communist China is looking at what America and the free world does in Ukraine, whether we're going to have the gumption to actually help Ukraine uh, fend off an invasion by Russia and to not visit Taiwan uh, when you're in that region of the world sends a bad signal, an encouraging signal for communist China to go ahead and attack uh, Taiwan as they've been threatening. We don't want that to happen. As you're aware, uh, last fall, communist China actually went so far as to threaten a nuclear strike on Japan should Japan adhere to its obligations to Taiwan. Uh, this is a very dangerous situation. It's one of those powder kegs that's ready to explode. And I believe that a visit by the president to Taiwan would reaffirm our commitment to Taiwan, thereby helping to deter China's aggression in that direction. Let's pivot to an issue that's facing American parents today. That has to do with this baby formula shortage we've seen. I'm sure uh, some residents in your state and your congressional district might have taken notice of the empty shelves in the formula aisle. The president says he has. Here's his plan to address the crisis. And I've directed my team to do everything possible to ensure there's enough safe baby formula and that it's quickly reaching families that need it the most. Is it too little too late? Well, let me emphasize where my family is. Uh, we've been blessed with two granddaughters back in October, another granddaughter uh, in December. So that's three uh, that could very much use better access to this baby formula. Uh, I wish that the federal government had not been so slow in reacting uh, to the allegations of uh, impure products that were being manufactured at one plant. Uh, we should not have had that plant shut down so long. Hopefully it's going to get a stamp of approval uh, safe in about uh, a week or two, at which point production will resume sometime thereafter. And hopefully a couple of months from now, this problem will be behind us. But the federal government, unfortunately, has not been as aggressive as it should in first recognizing this issue and then getting out of the way so that the private sector could fix it. Mm. And it's a time issue, right? For families that only it have is. a limited supply left at home. They're looking for some relief right away. We're going to keep an eye on that. I also wanted to ask you about the America Competes Act. It's floating through the House right now, introduced by Democrats in January. But exclusive reporting from the Daily Caller claims the House version of the bill would allow for an unlimited number of green cards for high-skilled foreign nationals with no protections for American workers. Congressman, what's really in the fine lines of this legislation? Well, the problem that we have with this agenda of the Democrats and the Chamber of Commerce combined, you wouldn't think those two groups would combine, but they do, is that when you import these huge numbers of cheap foreign laborers, whether they be blue collar or white collar, that has a suppressing effect on our blue collar workers and our middle income white collar workers and exacerbates the gap between what I call the masters of the universe that are pushing all these cheap foreign labor policies and the regular Americans, uh, men and women, blue collar, white collar that are struggling to make ends meet in a time of runaway inflation. So it's a bad policy at a bad time. We need to be much more protective of American jobs for American families. Mm. I know that will be a focus of your Senate campaign. And I wanted to ask you about that because uh, you got to make it through the primaries. And I know that that's coming up soon. The former president, Donald Trump, had endorsed you 
but then essentially took that endorsement away. Tell me about where your campaign stands right now. Well, we've been on the surge. Um, we have gained just about doubled our, our polling numbers since the time that Donald Trump withdrew his endorsement. I understand why he did it. He understands why he did it. Uh, fortunately, in the state of Alabama, the voters are faced with what is really a fairly simple choice, and they're starting to understand that. If you want a John McCain type of Republican, then vote for Mike Durant. If you want a Republican who is going to be in Mitch McConnell's camp, establishment, special interest group, open borders type of Republican, then you vote for Katie Britt. If you want a principal conservative, a MAGA candidate, a House Freedom Caucus founder type of candidate, then vote for Mo Brooks. Different voters have different preferences, but that's the way it's uh, consolidating right now. I'm getting the conservative vote, and in Alabama, that's a good thing. Hmm. Uh, you mentioned some of the differences between yourself and the other candidates, but what is it when it comes to specific policy, perhaps on the economy? As we know, uh, Americans are most concerned about how much money they have in their pockets right now and perhaps, um, you know, less money than they've had previously before. Tell me about your experience and how you would apply that to your own campaign. Well, I graduated from Duke University with highest honors and a major distinction uh, in economics. And so I've got some background uh, associated with the issues that we face, such as inflation and whatnot. But if you want to talk about a particular issue, here's a big one. Uh, I have a long history of fighting higher taxes and also fighting to protect family incomes. Uh, Katie Britt, she and I are battling for number one right now. Uh, Katie Britt has publicly supported more tax increases than any other Republican in Alabama history. That's a pretty big contrast, and I think I'm on the right side of that contrast in a Republican primary, so we'll see how it plays out. And finally for you, sir, uh, the January 6th committee had issued a subpoena for your appearance in regards to conversations about what happened at the Capitol on January 6th. Um, tell me about your response to that. Would you be um, able to uh, show up before these members and answer their questions? Do you plan to do so? Well, I haven't received it, so I don't know what's in it. Uh, that's kind of an initial starting uh, point problem. Uh, but I'm amenable to considering testifying if it's actually congressmen who are asking the questions. If it's important enough for me as a congressman to be there, it ought to be important enough for them as a congressman to be there. Uh, if they want to send staffers, then maybe I should send one of my staffers uh, to meet with their staffers. Uh, so we ought to be on a par. Additionally, it ought to be done in public. It shouldn't be this clandestine secret type stuff. We saw that with the impeachment efforts against Donald Trump. Uh, we saw how the secrecy surrounding the Russian collusion hoax allowed it to go on for two years. Boy, this is the public's business. It ought to be done in public so that you, you can have your cameras there and you can film everything live if you want or record what you want so that the public can see what is actually transpiring as opposed to these little leaks. And then finally, the questions need to be limited to uh, things uh, associated with January 6th. And I probably add, a, add another one. I don't like the idea of uh, Nancy Pelosi and Pencil Neck trying to adversely affect this United States Senate race by taking me away from the state of Alabama for about a week to do all the document recovery, inspection, preparation, and then uh, deposition. That's not the way it should be done. But if they were to meet those requirements, I'd be much more likely to participate voluntarily. But the way they're doing it right now, it's a sham. It's a witch hunt. It's hyper-partisan. It's not designed to get to the truth. It's only designed to try to give one party, the Democrats, an advantage in the November elections. All right. We got to leave it right there. Congressman Mo Brooks joining us this morning. Thank you, sir. We appreciate your time My today. My pleasure. Thank you. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.